There are many load balancing solutions in Azure, and today we're looking at one of the core services when it comes to traffic management for virtual machines. This is introduction to Azure Load Balancer. Stay tuned. Azure Load Balancer is your service within Azure for efficient traffic distribution. What this means is that this service was designed for low latency and high throughput network traffic distribution from your front-end request to your back-end servers. So how does it work? Let's take a scale set for this example, because scale set is perfect example of how would you want to use load balancer within Azure. Because scale set, just for reminder, is a set of identical virtual machines. And within scale set, you might want to have from one to hundreds of servers at the same time. So your job is to distribute the traffic equally across those servers. And you can do that with load balancer. A typical scale set is always located within a subnet and a virtual network. And what you do is you create a load balancer that will actually put a traffic incoming to that virtual machine. And this virtual machine will be grouped into something called a backend pool. This is a group of virtual machines that will be handling your incoming requests. And whenever your scale set will start scaling and adding more virtual machines, it will automatically update a load balancer. Whenever a backend pool is already set, it is up to you to decide whenever you want to expose that load balancer to a public internet or not. Whenever you do, you can assign a public IP allowing users and client applications to connect it. And when you do, a static public virtual IP will be assigned, making it a public load balancer. Otherwise, a private IP will be assigned, making it an internal load balancer. And you will very often see this term being used in the documentation and other specifications. So it's very important to note that. And in very high level, this is how load balancer works. But the key terms that you need to understand are first of all, front-end IP configurations. Those are speaking about those private and public IP configuration. And additionally, backend pools. Those are simply the group of servers handling your requests. Additionally, there's gonna be something called health probes. This is the way you set up monitoring for your backend pool health. What this means is that your load balancer needs to know if it's okay to route the traffic to your one of your backend server. And you do that through health probes. You set up a health probe, which will be periodically checking a server whenever it's up. And if it is, it will be redirecting the traffic there as well. Next up are load balancing rules. This is how you distribute the traffic to your backend pools, one or more backend pools or for your load balancer. So you specify things like, what kind of IP? Is it IPv4, V6? What kind of ports are you listening to? Is it TCP or UDP? Which kind of servers are you redirecting to? So which kind of backend pool are you using for this kind of traffic? And things like that. So this is your main logic of how Load Balancer will distribute the traffic. Inbound NAT rules allow you to bind a specific incoming IP and port to a specific instance of your server within the backend pool because classic load balancing rule will always redirect to any server within the backend pool. In this case, you can actually specify a specific server, a specific instance of a server within the backend pool using those rules. And lastly, you also have outbound rules, so you can actually control the outgoing traffic as well. One thing that I want to mention here is the difference between a scale set and availability set. Because the key difference here is that Scaleset is creating virtual machines and deleting those virtual machines automatically. Therefore, it needs to automatically update the load balancer. But whenever you're using availability set, you're creating a unique set of virtual machines. Therefore, it is your job to manually update backend pools yourself. So this is the key difference when you're using availability sets. And when you're building those multi-tier applications and you have, for instance, your web tier, which serves your front-end request, make sure that you create a separate public load balancer for that tier. And you also create a separate load balancers, a private ones for a business and data tiers. So that not only the traffic is properly secured, but also is properly distributed across your virtual machine environments. One important thing that I want to mention here is that Usually in most services in Azure, the difference between SKUs is the performance. But in this case, there's a lot of differences between the basic and the standard load balancer. Definitely check the entire article on MSDN docs on it. But for now, remember that 
The key difference is, is, for instance, in basic, you can only attach VMs with an availability set or scale set. In case of standard, it can be any virtual machine in Azure. A standard load balancer also supports HTTPS for health probes. It is possible to create it within availability zones to create those highly resilient architectures. It has many more metrics within diagnostics and is secure by default, so you actually have to open the ports on network security groups yourself. In case of basic, this is other way around. So it's not secure by default, you actually have to do that security yourself. And the last difference that I want to mention today is how does Load Balancer differ from other services that allow for traffic management within Azure? And one of the key differences is, first of all, it is designed for regional deployments. So you create a Load Balancer within a single region and you load balance the traffic for virtual machine within the same region. In case of recommended traffic, it is also recommended for non-web traffic. So if you're building a web application, web frontend, definitely consider and you actually should use application gateway in that case. If you're going for global deployment, you have a traffic manager to combine with your load balancer traffic. So it's a, like a Lego blocks that you should just combine multiple pieces to get your global and regional deployments. But that's the key difference, the key use case for load balancer in Azure. The demos for today are creating a public load balancer in Azure portal. Then I'm going to give you a script that will run and create some infrastructure for which we're going to run and create a backend pool. Then we're going to add a health probe. So we're going to make sure that our backend is up and running whenever we're redirecting a traffic to it. And lastly, we're going to create a load balancing rule and test it everything in the browser whenever our backend is responding properly. For this demo, we're going to use availability set with three virtual machines, but creating that takes time. So I created you a simple CLI script that you will run in a cloud shell, which will create this for you. So the thing that you will be doing today is simply creating a load balancer with public IP, so a public load balancer, and redirecting the traffic to your backend pools and testing this from the browser. So let's jump to the Azure portal. In the portal, you want to open a cloud shell and log in using Bash, because the script that you created is using Bash and CLI to create the virtual machines. And the script looks like this. This is a Visual Studio and a script that I prepared for you. The script is rather simple. It will create a group called Azure Load Balancer Introduction. Within that resource group, it will create a VNet, create the availability set, and create three virtual machines within this availability set. Then it will open a port 80 because our availability sets and virtual machines will be simulating a web application for which we're going to install extension at the very end so that we get a very simple response from the IIS web server saying the name of the virtual machine. So we can quickly recognize which virtual machine are we currently connected to. So simply grab this entire script and right click, paste as plain text into the bash and just wait. After the script completes, you can actually close the cloud shell and review what was created. Note that the script runs for 20 something minutes and I could paralyze this, but I don't want it. I want it to be very simple script that after it completes, you are sure everything was provisioned. You can actually go to your Azure Load Balancer introduction group and let's select grouping by type and hide this. So you see, you have one availability sets three disks, three network interfaces, one network security group, three virtual machines, and one virtual network. So that was created. And if you want to review what is going on the virtual machine, normally you cannot connect to it right now because there's no public IP assigned. So you can actually connect from within virtual network. But there's a feature within Azure portal that allows you still to run the command on that virtual machine. And you can use curl using PowerShell to localhost and use basic parsing to get the result of what is currently running on the virtual machine on the local host to ensure that this IIS and this web application is currently running. And this takes about a minute. As we see, we've got the response from the script and the content of our call was VM EU01. And for second and third VM, it's gonna be 02 and 03. So we can easily see which virtual machine we were redirected from the load balancer. So let's actually go and start creating the load balancer right now. So hit create resource, 
type load balancer. Find in the marketplace the load balancer from Microsoft, hit create. For the load balancer, there's very few things that you need to pick. First of all, select the resource group. I'm gonna use the one that I created right now. Give it a name, I'm gonna call it demo LB. Give it a region. Remember, this is a regional deployment and as such, you need to put it in the same region and easiest is to type North Europe because the script that I gave you creates everything in North Europe. Next, choose whenever it's internal or public. In our case, the VMs don't have public IP and I want to grant them access from public internet. Therefore, I'm creating a public load balancer in basic SKU because I don't need those additional features. Since this is a public load balancer, we need to assign an IP address. To do so, provide a name for IP address resource, so that's gonna be demo LB IP. And in my case, I'm gonna choose a static IP to get a public static IP for my load balancer. Hit review and create, and hit create. Creation takes from 15 to 30 seconds because there's a lot of things that needs to be provisioned here. Once the deployment is completed, hit go to the resource, and here you will be able to review what was created. If you will go to the front-end IP configuration of your load balancer, you will find the IP configuration and a static IP that was assigned to your load balancer front-end IP configuration. So this is the public IP that you connect, connect to your load balancer. Additionally, you have backend pulls. This is the first thing you should be doing whenever creating load balancer rules. So you need to define what kind of servers are part of your backend pool. To do so, create a new backend pool, give it a name. I'm gonna call my demo pool. Select the virtual network. And this was this important part. If you wouldn't select the right region, you wouldn't see virtual networks because those will be only available from the same region. Within that virtual network, you need to select what is it associated to. So what is part of this backend pool? In this case, it is a virtual machine or a virtual machine scale set. In our setup, this will be a virtual machine because they are part of the availability set. So select a virtual machine EU1, select IP configuration from the network interface and do the same for 02 and 03 machine. This is how you manually add each server to your backend pool. Create by clicking add and wait for a couple of minutes. This usually takes between two, five, sometimes I reached up to 10 minutes. So just be patient and wait until the backend pool is added and updated in the portal. And after a couple of minutes, after you review that the deployment succeeded, you can actually finish this and review that you should have a pool called demo pool with three virtual machines in a status running. Next, you need to create a health probe. As I said, a health probe is a way that load balancer will monitor whenever those servers are up and running. To do so, hit create by hitting add button. Give it a name. I'm gonna call it demo LB probe. What kind of protocol is it gonna be used to communicate to backend servers to check the health? In my case, it can be TCP over port 80 because those are HTTP enabled web servers that I created over an interval of five seconds. So check every five seconds. And if there are two consecutive failures, then report the server as unhealthy. Hit OK. And again, this will initially take a couple of minutes. Sometimes the portal does not refresh properly. So I advise you just every now and then after a couple of minutes, just press F5 to refresh the portal and you should see updated whenever load balancer is still updating. Once you have the health probe, it's still not doing anything yet. What you need to do is you need to go to load balancing rules and add last missing piece. So this is the actual traffic balance rule. So you need to hit add and call it, let's say demo LB rule. And for the other fields, I'm gonna leave mostly default, but let me explain very clearly. First of all, you have IP version. So this is the version that your load balancer will be listening to and redirecting the traffic from. In this case, I'm for that traffic, I'm choosing my front end IP, which is 1374110. I want to monitor over port T1. 
TCP, so everything that comes over TCP over port 80 should be redirected to also a backend port of 80. This is this configuration here. At this point, I want this traffic to be redirected to port 80 over my backend pool, so one of those three virtual machines. And to monitor those virtual machines, I want to use the health probe that I just created that will also be monitoring over port 80. For the session persistence, I currently don't set anything, which means every time I connect to the server, every time I establish new session, I can land in any random server. The other options that you have here is client IP and client end protocol. That means that once I establish an one connection for future session, even if I close the browser, I will be still redirected to the same server. So I'm choosing none because I want to be redirected randomly to any server for every new session. And I'm going to leave idle timeout by default. And floating IP is something, if you're going to hover over here, it's going to say that use this setting pretty much if you're using SQL always on availability group. Otherwise, just leave it as disabled. Hit OK. And again, just give it a couple of minutes. Same principle here, after a couple of minutes refresh the browser, because sometimes this message of updating the load balancer does not refresh, so you get the most up-to-date information. Go back to the overview, and you can actually copy the public IP address. It is also interesting to note if you will go to the resource group, and you will go to any of the virtual machines that are created, you will notice that the public IP address of the load balancer is also listed as a public IP address of your virtual machine. So if you copy it from here, it will be pretty much the same IP. You can now open the second tab of your browser. And as you see, load balancer is currently redirecting us to EU03 virtual machine. If I would keep refreshing this page right now, notice that sometimes I can get redirected to other servers, but usually as long as I stay and keep being active on the server, I will be redirected to the same server. If I want to simulate the proper traffic, I can always open the new tab of the browser. And if I would keep doing that, every time I will be randomly sent to one of those servers. So this is how easy it is to set up load balancer. You can also test very quickly disaster recovery scenario. So in case our 01 machine would go down, simply you can simulate it by hitting stop and grab this IP and again, open a new window of the browser, paste in the IP, and you might still see that message. But if you keep refreshing the page, after a few seconds, load balancer will also notice that the server is down and will no longer redirect the traffic to EU01. That was actually pretty perfect that I was still able to catch it because it takes up to those 10 seconds that we configured for the load balancer to consider this virtual machine unhealthy. But after that, it will consider it unhealthy and no longer redirect the traffic there. So the very last thing that I want to show you is by going to load balancer and changing that session persistence setting that I was talking about. So if we go to load balancing rules, go to the demo I'll be rule and at the bottom, you can still change that session persistence setting. So you can change it to, for instance, client IP. When you do it and update the load balancing rule, after a couple of minutes, every time I will go to my load balancer, to that public IP, I should be redirected to the same server. So you should no longer randomly get redirected to any of the backend pool. Once the backend pool is chosen for every new session, I should be getting the same server every single time. And once the updating of the rule is completed, simply grab the IP, open new browser window again, the server 03 was picked for us. That means every single time we're going to open that new session, we're still going to be redirected to the same server by our IP. This is the session persistence setting. There are so many scenarios that you can cover with Load Balancer, starting from high availability for your applications, going through scaling, securing backend and frontend, or any kind of multi-tier application that is based on virtual machines. That's it for today. If you like the video, hit thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe if you want to see more, and definitely I'm gonna see you next time.